Chowash Quash Dila. My name is Dila. Dush Guxpali, a black one. Dush and the Kek 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 King to me. I come from Spencer's Bridge. I come from a small place called Dry Creek. Njia Nskatsa Asunskiza. That is where my mother and father live. Sun Spapsa Asun Kza Dukspeps in Atlakush. My grandmother and my grandfather came from Spatsum. Spepson is Spatsum. I lived there in Nkekek for 20 years. And then I moved to Springs, which is in your area here, near the Logan Lake turnoff. The best role model in my life, I think, has been both my parents and my grandparents. Not necessarily in that order, because it goes back and forth now and again. But since they were my teachers from the very beginning of my life, especially my mother and father, I would guess that my mother and father probably have equal, equal role there in my heart uh, as my teachers. Do I dream in a language? Achen equal Did I guess I don't know. That is a very interesting question. I love it. I will start uh, remembering if I do or not. I've never thought about it. In my daily life, I use the Lagabuchin language not as frequently as one might guess. I feel that my language was replaced by English the minute I went to school, way back in 1947. That was many years ago. However, I learned uh, English uh, that during that time. So I have a good capacity, I think, for my initial language, my birth language. I use it nowadays in little stories with my husband. We live together alone, and um, we occasionally speak it together. So it's in my view, very special to us as in Lekapmuk people to learn Lekapmuk Jin, and that is my wish and desire for our people. Who has been the most important person or best role model in your life? I guess growing up here, you know, and a uh, long time ago, I never knew how to speak English. Mostly Indian language. I went to residential school. That's where I started learning how to speak English. And uh, born and raised here in the saddle horse and wagon days. And uh, I never went to school very long. Only grade three. But uh, I've come to be a hard working man. And, I've been like that all my life, and I'm still doing it. So, you know, uh, it's good to be here with you young guys. And to try and know some that you want to know, ask me and I will try and get it to you. How often do you use uh, the camera machine in your daily life, and what are the circumstances? The only time I get to talk to somebody is not very often meet anybody that talks the language. You know, uh, it's very important to, even this college, you know, they're trying to get the young people to speak, speak their Indian language, which would be good, you know. There's a lot of us, uh, uh, us elders are not very, just a very few left. If we don't get it out there to the young people, they're going to be lost. Do you ever dream in the language? Do I ever what? Do you ever have dreams in the 
for camera? All the time. I miss that. And, uh, and I wake up in the morning and I can still remember my dream, you know. It makes me feel good. Tell us about your earliest memory of speaking with the camera machine. My earliest time I was speaking my English language. A long time ago, you know, the old people never speak English. And then I started speaking Indian when I was growing up till I went to residential school. And when I speak to Indian in the residential school, I got beat up. So I had to speak English. So that's the way it went a long time ago. Now I speak English. Very seldom we hear about Indian people talking their language. And sometimes I meet somebody here and I talk to talk my language with them. Then they were gone and I never see nobody no more. So we have to get the Indian, Indian language back in order. Otherwise we're going to be losing everything. My name is Lorraine Spence. I'm come, uh, I come from Carmen, and that's between Spence's Bridge and Lytton. My mother is Elizabeth Lytton. She's still alive. She's 97. My grandparents are Mabel and Tommy Lytton, who came from Carmen. The most important from the time I could remember uh, a role model in my life was my grandmother and also my grandfather. How often do you use a Flacab machine in your daily life and what are the circumstances? Not very often because I don't have anybody around me that speaks the language. Do you ever dream in the language? I don't recall dreaming in the language. I don't think I've ever heard anybody or, or I, I haven't spoken in the language in my dreams. My interests, um, I don't know, helping others. I do a lot of volunteer work. I'm still working part time and I'm on the Elders Council here at NVIT and I love horses. I used to ride a lot. I don't, I haven't ridden for a, a while and I, I still love horses. They're my animals. In Squestal Manjutil, a shock and a galakun, in Jedom and Casuel, no Honak, in Scotza, Dan George and Skikra, China Tulakan. The Captain can find Jutin. What are your interests, like hobbies and such? I enjoy a humina, Zaum, the Skyaden, a humina, Kakyam. Alumina Kaim Dakam Tan and Kunwantam as a Hanshkt. Who has been the most important person or best role model in your life? Hans Nkadas Nahoynak and Han Chunamuk Shimstakam Dastas, Sailaka Sakstana, Ktamus Kadas Nkada. I didn't stop that. Just because I White. Uh, Java. In your opinion, what is the most important word or phrase to learn in the Nkakatmuk language? 
yeah, that it is very hard. As I'm probably the youngest fluent speakers in the valley, and we're losing our elders, um, losing our elders very fast. And where I live, we we only have a few more elders, and if they're gone, I will have no one to speak to. The younger generation don't know the language that well. Some are trying to learn, try to learn the language. Then I always tell them, tell the younger generation, get everything you can from me because one day I'm going to go home and I'm taking everything with me. Take and learn everything that I know. Take and learn and carry it on to someone else. To carry it, pass it on. My grandmother tells me, we give you that gift for you not to keep. You pass it on to somebody else. Let somebody else take over that language. And you have done your job, that's why you're going home. And then when you go home, you pack everything with you. Yeah, here's my grandmother always told me in the language, I teach you now. I don't want you to learn what I have taught you. But as you walk into your future, one day you will stop. Then you will look back. Then you will see what I have taught you. Yeah, that's what my grandmother would always tell me all the time. I never forget it. Yerikson one on. So that goes quest. Yana goes hold and slack and I go on. Um, since she is a uh, now the Hilda Austin, um, at the Scots Charles Monroe, at the she the Michelin she is a um, now her look the. Uh, Ernest, uh, Edward George, and um, at Chapel, she them scattered at William Monroe, Nook, at Annie Monroe. Yanogan Chog, this lag nea, Yanogan Chog, and this heim nea, ya, it's chew up an air. At Naipen of Nak on a Kenjutan and Jap. Chaim's gadak on a do to wilt, Chaim's gana, Chaim da Chaimurak, a can I pias hog, a cra ha oim, yak that excite can maskino, so Chaim was stuck on chaila do to wilt, chutkin, Homas cook jam. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your traditional way. My name is uh, Sharon Spinks. And uh, my Indian name is Shadetko, and uh, my mother's name is Hilda Austin, that's her second marriage. And uh, my father is Charles Monroe from Shishpa, the Siska. And, um, and her, uh, my uh, grandparents on my mother's side is uh, Edward George from Vernon and um, Chappelle. My uh, grandparents on my dad's side is William Monroe and uh, Annie Monroe. And uh, I'm f kind of of two bands there from the Shishka or Siska band. And my father moved us to, to Lytton because there was nine of us. So the, the little uh, two room house is just not big enough. So he moved us to uh, Lytton on a big ranch. And um, we had, uh, he um, put out some uh, fruit trees there for us because there's so many of us. 
there were so many of us and um, I had to look after my my siblings at that and uh, we had many aunties and uncles that would that would come by and visit us and uh, that was always there was always really a happy occasion and um, yeah I had I come from a big family what are your interests um, there are many things that, that I've learned uh, from my grandparents on my father's side and, uh, and one of them was how to deal with um, uh, things that fall on, on our path which sometimes are not, um, uh, some of them are devastating and just to give you an example, um, there were, I remember it just come to me um, we, our family had lost uh, a cat and uh, that cat and I I think grew up together and uh, the cat died and uh, so I was really devastated and I my mother thinks I was about three years old when we lost the cat <coughs> and the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is uh, how my grandparents uh, my grandfather on my father's side showed me by writing on the dirt on the, on the ground and he drew a circle and um, it is a deep circle and uh, he said he talked in like a machine you are feeling sorry right now when he drew that circle but he drew another circle and uh, he said talk to me, talk to your parents, talk to your grandmother and um, and then we will become your medicine. It, it won't completely take the hurt and pain away from losing your cat but talk to us. And then he drew another circle which is very light and he said and he said uh, and so what um, my grandfather said was that when he drew the very light circle he said the the hurt and pain of losing your cat uh, it won't totally go away it, it but it's part of you it's part of what makes you a person and by talking to us talking to your your parents talking to me, what you're doing right now, um, the pain will will lessen. It it will be almost like you put it aside, and you have to go on with what you're doing today. So uh, it it just come to me, and I hope you don't mind me telling you this because in the long run, I have used that um, many times in my work uh, with people, uh, especially with the residential school survivors, I've uh, used some of that philosophy that my, gran my grandfather showed with me, was that there is a way to get around uh, hurt and pain that, that falls in your path, is the way my grandfather uh, taught me, was that there are many things that will fall in your path and there is a way to get around it and by talking to people and he said for an example I was talking to him and and I quit crying at that time because I, I was just fascinated by listening to him and right then I could feel that that the medicine he was talking about was by communicating with other people and he said keep on talking to me talk to your parents talk to your grandmother which I did and um, the pain will lessen it'll become less prominent and uh, so uh, in all the years that I've been involved in counseling helping people um, I've used that philosophy and I hope that um, that answers part of your question there it's not a hobby it's um, it's like um, sharing the teaching with other people. So I love to do that. Okay. 
My name is Ross Albert. Uh, I am the son of Wilson Albert and Teresa Albert. I am the grandson uh, of uh, Hejimkin, my grandfather, and uh, Lucy, my grandmother. And uh, I was born in Cook's Ferry. Actually, I was born at Totlebach, uh, which is uh, seven miles outside of uh, Spencer's Bridge. Okay. I can remember speaking my language at home. Uh, I believe I went to the residential school at age five and I was speaking the language already. Um, and then of course in a residential school we were forbidden to speak the language. However, we did speak the language, we, uh, what we call the old genome. We would hide the language, we'd speak the language when there was no supervisors around. Um, and there was always somebody keeping six and uh, somebody watching out for the supervisor. When the supervisor was coming, they would let us know and uh, we would stop speaking the language. But uh, after a while, you kind of forget the language somewhat. I believe it's still there and um, uh, I can speak the language quite well now. Um, however, I do have some difficulty with some words. The advice I would have is that, um, uh, like I said, never give up, keep trying, and uh, let me see, uh, I guess just never give up on yourself. I think what happens to a lot of people is they give up on themselves. I gave up on myself for a while, and uh, uh, I decided not to do that anymore. Because of the things that had happened in a residential school, uh, I was told that I would never amount to much. I was going to be a drunk like my father, uh, so on and so forth. I was that for a while. And then after, um, I guess it was in about 1982, after my father died, that was when I decided to stop fulfilling that prophecy that somebody had told me before that self-fulfilling prophecy was that I was going to be that, what they told me. And uh, then I decided to go back to school. Then I decided to do something with my life. And I think a lot of people give up on themselves. And we have to, um, we don't have to do that anymore. Do I dream in a Thompson language? Do you dream in the language? I don't believe so. Um, I can't remember my dreams. I know we dream, uh, but I can't remember. Uh, I think I dream in the English language. I think I dream in the English language. Mm -hmm.